Lately I've found myself daydreaming a different country. The same bones, a different body. I imagine you can get there by passing through the thin places. The spaces and borders where other worlds bleed through. I remember growing up the BBC did an adaptation of Alan Garner's Elidor. It's a very slight book in comparison to his other work, but that adaptation and the way it visualised the two worlds bleeding into each other has always stuck with me. Even Garner's lesser work has such a keen sense of the uncanny, such a keen sense of time and place becoming unstuck. Of course, if you know what to look for, you know that Garner was not conjuring this up out of thin air. What else are all our stories of fairy hills, or of ghostly underground pipers, if not stories of other worlds bleeding into our own? This is a haunted landscape we inhabit, haunted by those other worlds as much as it is haunted by our own past. The highlands are a barren, empty desert. They are a landscape scarred by greed and cruelty. They are a desert maintained as such, so that a handful of millionaires and billionaires can murder deer and grouse with an absolute minimum of effort. People used to live here. Trees used to grow here. The highlands should be covered in temperate rainforest. They should be full of people. They are not. And they are not because the people who lived here the ecosystem that thrived here were deemed expendable, unproductive. This other country, I imagine it's hard to get to. I imagine there is no map, there are no directions to be followed that will take you there. I imagine it can only be stumbled into. I see myself climbing, following a well-worn path surrounded by bracken and heather. But as I reach the ridge, Clouds close and fast. Too fast, it seems. But then it's easy to get caught out by the weather in the hills. Finding myself now in thick cloud, I tentatively make my way up to the ridge. And I don't notice the sound at first. Mistake it for the wind. But the higher I climb, the louder it gets. A constant muffled white noise that seems to come from all directions, with no visible source. As I reach the ridge it becomes deafening, before receding as I descend the other side, leaving only a ringing in my ears like the afterimage of a bright light. But I find myself surprised by the trees, far more of them, and far higher up than I'd expect to see in the highlands. The air is thick with moisture, there is moss and lichen on every surface. I can barely see more than a few metres ahead, trees and ferns receding into clouds. As I descend out of the clouds, I am startled to find myself at the top of a thickly forested glen, far removed from the bare grass and bracken I had expected to find. And stranger still, I can see a series of vast concrete arches emerging from the trees, like the bones of an immense, beckoning cathedral. <laughs> 